In this problem, we have a square loop of current, so the current flows this way. And we want to know if the sides of our length L, what is the magnetic field at the center of this square loop? Okay, so of course the magnetic field points into the board here. So let's look at each side of the square loop. So for example, look at the bottom side. So here, the current is flowing this way. And we want to know what field this side produces at this point, at distance L over 2 which is at the center of the loop. So look, consider a little bit of current here at ds. And each little bit of this of current is at some distance x away from the center of, the, of that piece of loop. And at some distance r from the center of the square. So we want to know the field produced only by this one side of the square loop. So the field is given by the Beards of Art law. And we can write it as, as this, the Beards of Art law. So in this case, we can take into account this fact that x, this length x, divided by this length x, divided by L over 2, gives us a tangent of what we call this angle phi. So from this we can derive this equation. Okay, so then dx is equal to, to this right here. Of course, secant square is 1 over cosine square, so we can write it as this. So we have an expression for dx. And let's write it up here so we don't forget what this expression looks like. So now we have an expression for dx. Now, another thing that is useful is to, to write that L over 2 divided by r is a cosine of phi. Here, this L over 2 divided by r is a cosine of phi. So in, in that case, r is just L over 2 divided by cosine of phi. So that's another expression. I'm going to write it out here because it's going to be very useful. Okay, so, so now that we have these two expressions, we, we write again the expression for this magnetic field. So this expression is just, well, we have this, this term outside the integral. ds is just minus dx in this case. And, and you have to do a cross product. So I have the sine of, of this angle theta and you divide it by r squared. So now we can plug in what dx is, because we have this expression for dx. So we plug in what dx is into this integral. dx is this expression. And we have cosine of phi, because sine of theta is the same as cosine of phi. This, this theta and this phi are complementary angles. So now uh, we can divide by r squared. We have an expression for r. So we can use a, a, that expression for r. Okay, so, oh sorry, we don't need the square here. We just, like that, that's r squared on the denominator. Okay, so now we have this, this expression for the magnetic field at the center of the loop produced by only this one side of the loop. Okay, so the total magnetic field is, is given by this. The total magnetic field produced by this one side of the loop. Okay, I'm just simplifying what I have written down at the bottom. And the integral goes from phi equals to, to pi over 4 to minus pi over 4. So we're integrating over the length of the loop, of the side. Okay, so this magnetic field, we have this integral from minus pi over 4 to pi over 4. We switch the limits of integration by multiplying the whole thing by minus 1. Okay, so we have this, and this integral is pretty easy now, because 2 over L is a constant that we can take out of the integral, and we only have the integral of sine of phi, the cosine of phi, which is sine of phi. So doing this integral is pretty easy, it's just sine of phi, and we evaluate it at the limits of pi over 4 and minus pi over 4. So it turns out that this magnetic field is given by this. And the sine evaluated at the two limits gives this term. So then we could just easily simplify this whole thing. Okay, so the magnetic field is this. But that's only the magnetic field that is produced uh, by this one side of the square loop. So if we want the magnetic field produced by the whole square loop, we have to multiply it by 4 to consider all four sides. So the total magnetic field is just four times that. Okay, so of course this could be just written as that, as this term here. So that's a total magnetic field at the center of the square loop. 
course the magnetic field is going to point into the page here. Okay, so be the total magnetic field at the center. Is this? I'm just going to plug in the numbers for what mu naught is. The current is 10. The length L is 0 0.4. So we get this number when we evaluate the expression. That's the the magnetic field at the center of the square loop. Micro Teslas. So now the next part of the problem asks us to make the, squ the square loop into a circle. So the circumference of this is four times the length. That's the perimeter of this that the square had. And the radius is a, two pi a is the circumference, so we can find what a is. So the radius of the circle is, is equal to that. Now the magnetic field here at the center is also pointing into the page. It's given also by the beauts of art law. So we write down what this law looks like. And here, ds cross r is just ds times 1, because ds is always perpendicular to r. The radius is a, so it's just this constant that we take out of the integral. And the integral of ds is just a circumference, just 2 pi a. So the magnetic field is just this. OK, so that's the magnetic field at the center of the circular loop. I forgot to put this a here. OK, so that's what the expression looks like. Now, we know what the current is, so we could just plug that into that expression. Okay, so the magnetic field is equal to mu naught times the current divided by 2a, which is given by mu naught is this number, the current is 10, and a is 1.6 divided by 2 pi. So if we evaluate this number, we get that the magnetic field at the center of the circle is this, in micro-Teslas.